I'd bet my shiniest nickel that you have at least one friend out there who is a nerdy rich programmer and makes way more money than they should. Well, in my friend group, that's me. And I think you too could be that person if you learned to program yourself. Traditional methods of learning to program are, well, they're frankly pretty boring. And so my idea is that you should instead learn to program by making your own video game. Hey there, I'm Aramis and I've been a programmer for over a decade now, which one, makes me almost 30 years old, and two, means I've made way more money than I otherwise think I should have. And that's not really because of my skill, sure, I think there is some skill in there, but I do think I got lucky with the knowledge I've obtained and the market itself pays quite a bit of money for this. This was out of 2021. You can see a software developer makes $120,000 a year, which for a lot of people would be life-changing money. But the money isn't the only reason I think being a programmer is great. In the last few years, I've seen a dramatic increase in the quality of life as a programmer, especially as people learn that these jobs can almost always be done remotely, which means you don't have to travel into an office every day. It saves you more time than you think if you don't have to commute. And there's even some small tech startups that are having a four day work week, which ultimately means you get 52 days back a year to live your life. I think becoming a developer is an incredible career path and I hope you can understand some of the huge quality of life improvements outside of just making more money that you could get if you learn to program yourself. Which doesn't mean it's an easy thing to do. In fact, it's the exact opposite. It's really weird to figure out how to make a computer do what you want by giving it code. It just doesn't quite work with our brains. That's why I think my idea of learning to program by making a video game might be the perfect way for you to learn. But first we need to understand a common way of learning to program and that's the free way of just watching some YouTube tutorials. And there are plenty out there that have millions of views and I'm sure they're really great, but as I've tried to watch them myself, I find them boring and I stop watching. And I think fundamentally speaking, one of the problems here is you're solving abstract problems. In order to learn to program, you have to start with little baby building blocks, like printing out the statement, hello world. That is a classic programming problem. And you're gonna start working your way up into if else statements, for loops, division, math, and has to slowly build up its complexity over time by the nature of programming. And the issue is these are all boring problems to solve. You might get a problem just like this. Given an integer n, perform the following conditions. If n is odd, print out weird. If n is even and inclusive range of two to five, print out not weird. At the end of this, you'll run your program and you'll get out a statement, a bunch of statements that say weird or not weird. And frankly, pardon the pun, that's weird and, and just really boring. For me personally, when I'm learning something new, I wanna be engaged in it and I wanna be developing some of the soft traits that I need in order to be successful at it. And with programming, there's a surprising amount of creativity and these uninspired problems that are gonna be teaching you the tools in the toolbox, just don't do it for me. Now I went to university where I learned how to program and part of that was force feeding myself those boring, boring problems for four years. I think going back in time and learning to program by making a game like Snake that is simple, but complicated, surprisingly complicated. If you have to program this, you're gonna learn a lot about logical statements and for loops. You're gonna have to check if the snake collides with itself versus food. You're gonna have to handle a spawning system for the food. And at the end of it, instead of having a program that simply spits out not weird or weird, you're gonna have a program that plays the game Snake. And I think. I think that's a big part of this. Having a resume full of these mini projects you've worked on can showcase your ability to learn and improve over time. Not to mention that modern game engines like Godot, which is the engine I use, are both free to use and they use modern languages. Godot uses GDScript, which is very similar to Python, and Unity uses C Sharp, which a lot of companies use to build their business applications already. I highly recommend Brackies if you wanna use Unity. That's where I started, that's how I learned C Sharp, and he does just that. He teaches you to program through the lens of game development, which is exactly what we're talking about here. I'm now at the point in my career where I've started interviewing other engineers, and it's a bit interesting to see what I care about when I'm looking at resumes, especially when I see hundreds and hundreds of resumes. And all things taken equally, the top thing I'm looking for is experience as a programmer. And surprisingly, above getting an actual degree, I'm really interested in if they have any personal projects as a programmer. 
which is where I think learning to program through the lens of game development is huge. This site is called itch.io. It is a free site that you can host your projects on, which is perfect for creating a portfolio of your work. Here's my very first game. It's called Network Protector. It was built for a game jam back in 2020, and it is uninspired and clunky and weird, but I love it all the same because it shows where I started as a game developer. And then over the years, I kept posting my projects on here and slowly but surely you can see my progress ultimately culminating in my first ever commercial game over on Steam, Chess Survivors, which I just released in August. Now I felt weird at first putting game development on a resume for a business job, but what I found actually is people were incredibly interested in learning about my game and the interview would center mostly around game development and not my former experience as a Salesforce engineer, which was incredibly surprising. It's probably because a lot of people play games. You can see in the last decade, it grew from 2 billion active gamers to 3 billion. But I think ultimately it comes down to the fact that making a game showcases a lot more about who you are as a person. You're spending your free time doing something that is both creative, it's challenging, and it's teaching you new skills, and it's showing that you are a curious person fundamentally. A quick $10,000 warning here that if you go down the path of learning to program by making a game, you may fall in love with game development as a hobby like I did. I no longer am a software engineer, instead I lead them, but over the last year I've been a hobbyist game developer releasing Chess Survivors, and over that year I've made $10,000, so even if you don't become a programmer, you can still make some good money on the side. And given enough time and dedication, you too might become that rich, nerdy friend who makes way more money than they should. I've been Aramis, thank you so much for watching.